Hey guys, so previously we've been looking at um, these animations according to just like techniques rather than um, specifically looking at uh, narrative. So I want to talk a little bit more about um, a sort of a narrative approach. So here I'm putting um, a, a, some video of grasses. Um, if you remember, I was talking about how I really am into the movement of grass, um, kind of watching the dance of grass. So here I'm just going to kind of introduce a short little narrative that'll show some techniques and talk about how we want to use these things really as devices to broaden uh, the way we look at the way we look at something. So whatever your maps are that you're putting a, that map within a context. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to create a mask on this, which will be approximately half of it. Um, you guys can make that uh, precise but I'm just gonna I'm just kind of rushing through it. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna duplicate that layer. Oop, not the mask, but the layer. Duplicate that layer. Uh, so that mask is an additive mask. This mask I'm gonna make a subtractive mask, and what that's gonna do is it's going to put the picture complete. Okay. Then over time I'm going to move them away from each other. So let's say from two, uh, we don't want to move the mask. We want to move the whole thing. So let's say position and dot dot position. Um, now over the course of say two seconds, I'm going to move this guy out to the right, this guy out to the left. Okay, so now what we have is we have this kind of field opening up between. Okay, so one of the fundamental things, if you know, if you think about the grass, what, what's controlling the grass is the wind. Um, the soil conditions on the one hand are controlling it in the sense of providing the nutrients that make it grow. And on the other hand, it's the wind that activates that kind of raw material. So the horizon becomes something which is extremely important. So now we can perhaps start to define the horizon and talk about kind of what is above and what is below that thing. So um, I took a couple other videos, one uh, kind of looking directly up from it. Um, so I'll drag that over, and then one looking more or less straight down at it, okay? So we'll define the horizon eventually, but for now I'm just going to pop these things in here. So here we're looking down, so that's going to be below the horizon line. So let's rotate that one around because we're looking at it in relationship to, so 80, duck. And then let's change the scale to say like 50% maybe, because we want it to be um, kind of contained within. And then uh, this other one, which is looking up. Let's put that one on top maybe. Um, and again, that, that one wants to be the same orientation because we're looking kind of you know up from it, but we'll change the scale again to 50%. Okay, so now uh, from, so now we're opening, now we're gonna be opening up to reveal this kind of above and below condition, right? Um, okay, so these gates that kind of kind of open. So I, we kind of need the um, horizon line within this, right, to kind of begin to define something. So let's make a new shape layer, and let's use the pen tool to create a line. Again, I'm just kind of you know I'm roughly doing this, but. Um, so I've got a stroke that's black. I have eight per eight pixel depth. That's kind of totally fine. I want to make it expand out as we get to say that point. That's where I want it to be open. So let's take contents, shape, path, and fix the path at that point. Then if we come back to when it begins to open, about here, let's say, and we just take one of those control nodes and we drag it into the center and we take the other one and we drag it into the center. And now what we're gonna have is we're going to have, now you can make that completely disappear obviously if you finesse it a little bit more, you spend a bit more time on it, but what we're gonna have, we're gonna have that line, that horizon line which kind of explodes out. Now as that horizon line explodes out, I want, um, these things to move up or down in relationship to that, the ground and the sky. Okay, so I want the positions of these things to shift. So now we have that opening out. So the horizon begins to define the sky, oop, um, begins to define the sky according to, so let's get that position, sorry. That one's the ground, so we want that one to come down. And we want 
Um, now this whole thing is going to look better if I actually had done, you know, everything properly so that it's actually split in the middle um, and all the lines are actually cleaner. Um, but you can understand how, uh, you know, how, how that'll look better and different. Okay, so now, now those two things open up. Now what we want to do maybe is we want to bring in a new scale. So we can say, okay, we have the horizon line being defined. The horizon line is kind of pushing this field apart to explore kind of what is happening above and what is happening below. Now we might want to animate that with uh, something which is more meta, which is the kind of weather levels, right? So I've gotten this picture of um, a pressure system. So if we went into Photoshop and we selected a color range of white, say, um, Apple Shift I just select inverse, I should have selected the black. So it made a new layer, um, which is a cut of just the the black. Sorry, my computer's trying to do too many things right now, so it's going very slowly. God, this is painful. Um, so if we delete that background layer, now what we have is we have this uh, layer of the pressure system. We could clean out if we wanted some of the, um, you know, the other stuff that we're not really paying attention to, um, just to kind of clean it up a touch. Um, let's just leave that. All right. Um, now, if we say file um, export as PNG, um, is that going to do that too? Um, so here what we have is we have nope. That's Hold on, guys. Sorry, I'm just not sure if that saved where that saved that. Okay, well, let's do. Oh goodness gracious! Okay, there we go. Save. So now, if we bring that PNG into After Effects, check it in here. And drop that on top of these layers. Um, let's scale that thing way up. Now we can see that it's on top of these others. Now, um, the resolution is terrible. Um, it, what would have been better, actually, you know what, I'll, I'll just do it super quick, actually, because it will it, it'll make a big difference. Um, if, if I got a higher resolution um, file to start with, it would have been better. Um, but if we just go open up that and drop all the lightness way down, now we're not going to have any weird fuzziness around um, the edges. It's just going to be uh, a more, well, it's, it's going to be only black. Um, all right, sorry, export. Quick export as PNG. You can obviously do this as high resolution if you're taking your time with it. Um, if you're unclear on any of the things I'm doing, um, either watch it back or uh, do a YouTube tutorial on it. Um, okay, so here we've got the PNG. We're gonna bring that back into After Effects. We're gonna put that on top again, and now hopefully we won't have all the weird layers. Yeah, so it's you know it's super pixelated again. That's just because of the resolution of the file. Um, all right, so let's um, scale that thing way up so that it's um, over the course of the whole thing. We want to animate that so it's kind of you know it starts speaking the language of movement. We want it also possibly to emerge in time. So we have the we have the horizon line opening out. We have those things kind of appearing and then perhaps we want to have this thing starting to fade in. So oops, that's for all of them. Okay. So um, if we drop that down say opacity, we want the opacity to start at 0. We want it to slowly creep in until it's 100. We also want the whole thing to be moving and rotating. So um, let's put that rotation here, um, change the position as well. Um, so now let's zoom out a little bit. Let's just say we're going to make the rotation, I don't know, 50 degrees over the course of that period. And we're going to bring it um, like up high here. And then if we jump back to the previous playhead, we're gonna move it down low. So now what we have is we have over time that thing kind of spinning, spinning out. 
as you know pressure system actually would. So that that seems like it's moving too fast. So if we just grab these playheads and bring them over a bit. Um, that's going to give us probably a slightly more gentle motion. That's a bit nicer. Now, something we can do um, to begin to animate on top of that would be, you know, if we duplicate this layer, we drag it back in time a little bit. Now we can see that this thing, they're starting to layer up. Actually, what would be smarter to do would be to drag the bottom one for what we're going to do now. Um, but if we zoom in on that, um, you can see we've got now kind of layers of information. Um, which are rotating slightly out of time with one another, right? The one below is, is slightly behind it. This is kind of how clouds move, right? So if we say, if we jump up here over to the effects panel, we type in blur and do like a Gaussian blur or something. Um, now let's turn that thing down. So we, we're oh, now I, I turn that top layer off. Now we're only looking at the layer below. And let's add a blur of like, I don't know, let's start with 10 and see how that looks. Okay, so now when we put that one on top of it, what we see underneath, I'm just gonna turn off some of these other layers just so we're really looking at is just the clouds in this instance. Um, what we're looking at is we're looking at so, sort of like the shadow of a cloud on the ground, right? So you have the cloud kind of moving above and then the shadow of the cloud moving below it, okay? Um, so, it begins to give some suggestion of depth, right? Um, we could do that with other layers. So here I got this other just like pulled off image of um, just like a wind pattern. This would be, you know, we'd want you guys to kind of create a drawing like this yourself. You know, you might take, say, the wind pressure on a specific day that you went for a walk, or you might take the weather patterns, or you might take, um, you know, any number of kind of atmospheric conditions and create a graphic from those things. But if we did the same process with this, we converted this into a PNG, took, well, we took the white out, converted it into a PNG, we could then add up all these, all these colors as separate layers into the After Effects file, and they could all be moving on top of each other in different ways. So you could have different undulations and different variations. If you then drop shadows below them, you could start to get a very rich depth of field, okay? So basically, in this incredibly quick um, little tutorial here, what we're really just talking about is we're talking about how we can take something, you know, simple and humble, grass, and suddenly you can start to connect it to a global condition, which is, you know, the movement of weather and time. Um, you could then go, you know, you could keep zooming into or out of this thing. If you guys don't know the Eames's Powers of 10 video, definitely, definitely check it out. I'll put a link up on the um, Explorations Miro page, um, and I'll do it, I'll put it on Learn too. Um, but uh, it's really good in terms of thinking about and talking about scales. Okay, so this is just to say, again, like a couple, you know, a little bit of um, technique stuff, um, kind of blasting through that pretty quick, um, just because we've already started to familiarize ourselves in the other tutorials. Um, but just to say that all of these techniques must be in the service of some kind of narrative. So basically, what are you saying with it? If you can be specific about that thing, then it's going to be more powerful. Um, so, you know, it's, this, is, this needs a lot of work, but it's, it's a start at something which begins to tell a story. These things could be, you know, placed in greater movement. Um, more layers could be added to them. There's all sorts of stuff that could happen that would tell a broader story here. If we started bringing in video of clouds, we started bringing in, you know, videos of murmurations of birds, and, um, all, you know, then the trajectories of wings, and you know, there's all kinds of stuff where that narrative could spill. So. Um, just just be thinking about that. Be thinking about what, what story are you telling um, and what's it in service of. So that is, uh, is it for now. Cool.